It's now six minutes past two o'clock, and here with the forecast, meteorologist Ben Abel. We're now seeing some mid-level cloudiness up around 8,000 feet, so we'll keep the forecast the same. Part it's it's a strange relationship because we never see each other. We're always talking to him on the phone. So it's a strange disembodied voice who gives us the forecast every day. I have a minor weather system, some energy aloft that's passing over the western Great Lakes. Since 1972, and, uh, St. Louis University professor and meteorologist Ben Abel has been phoning in his weather forecasts in his own inimitable style to St. Louis's national public radio station, KWMU. Becoming partly to mostly sunny on Wednesday, the high in the mid For many St. Louisans, most of whom have never actually seen him, his voice is the ultimate weather authority in a town where the weather has been known to blow hot and cold at a moment's notice. If Midwesterners have anything to say about it, Ben Abel should be declared a national treasure. I think our listeners really gravitate towards someone with a voice that has personality and appeal and is conversational yet draws you into what they're talking about and I think Ben has that quality. I'm with you, rain or shine. Maybe at a time when broadcast weather reports are as much about show business as science, Ben's appeal comes from being a real person, unimpressed with his celebrity status. Very unimpressed, yes. And that's partly because he, he, he's a, a serious forecaster. And when you're a forecaster, Mother Nature has a great way of humbling you. He is believable. People think he's reliable. When he's at receptions, people flock around him. I finally pulled a couple of people away and I said, why, do you all, why are you all attracted to Ben like this? It was a phenomenon. Because he's in my room every morning. He sets the pace for their day. No one could know that those highly detailed and dryly funny forecasts are read from a few notes on an index card. Ben is upfront about weather's resistance to predictability and confident enough to say, based on what I know now, this is my best educated forecast. He'll analyze the weather and say, with that in mind, the forecast is. So he frames it all before he gives you the forecast. And I think that's something that, you know, not a lot of other weather forecasters do. Do you keep track of your accuracy rate? No, I'm afraid to. <laughs> I don't know what I'll find, and I shouldn't do that anyway. That should be done independently. But you get it right most of the time. I hope so. I'm in the ballpark. I'm a graduate student in philosophy, and so I'm very interested about claims about knowledge. And what I find most interesting about Ben Abel is that he's very forthright about not knowing exactly what's going to happen and will tell you all of the evidence that he has for the claims that he's going to make. People really trust your forecasts. Well, I've had my days. I've had a couple of classics. I mean, big bust. I don't even want to talk about. Uh, but that goes back one in the uh, in the early 70s and another one in the early 80s. That was the big snow we had here in the early 80s, like 24 inches. <laughs> you missed it? I got the first four. <laughs> <laughs> He's been in meteorology probably 50 years. That experience, you can't. You can't teach that. I mean, he's gone through changes in meteorology that I read about in textbooks. And I've been in meteorology for longer than I care to imagine. But if the computer model says one thing and your gut tells you another, which way are you going to go? I'm going to go with the gut. I don't want surprises. I don't anticipate any surprises. But even in the best of weather, I do this. Look out the window. Absolutely. <laughs> and you get a better shot from in here. So computer models be damned if the sky is telling Ben Abel something different from his computer screen. Okay, uh, we're getting, and this, I, uh, this, is, this is what we were looking for. That's good. It's but comforting to see that a half century of human experience can still trump high tech. Uh, but again, once you start getting into the uh, computers, it's only as good as the program that's written. It's only as good as the data that is being fed into that. And uh, none of them are perfect. And again, I'm going to some extent with a gut feeling. And as far as working with the students, uh, yeah, we have the computer models. And in that capstone course that I have, the last semester of the senior year, uh, it takes about a third of that course really to, to try to get them away from some of those computer models. And I want another model from them. I want a model that's in here. I want a physical model. Can you imagine doing anything 32 years of your life, five days a week, for a few feeds every day on a reliable basis to present the weather. 
that is passion, that is love for what you do. Even when I'm driving, I'm always, you know, I'm looking and I'm saying, well, what the heck is going on? And I, I'll go out to the desert southwest very frequently, almost every year. And it's wonderful because I'm getting out there at about the time that the Arizona summer monsoon is breaking and I'm getting the thunderstorm activity and, uh, and what have you. And uh, it, it's just beautiful. So meet Ben Abel, the voice of St. Louis weather, a man who has seen his share of sunny and stormy days and never lost his fascination for whatever the heavens bring. From the Department of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences of St. Louis University, I'm meteorologist Ben Abel. I'm gonna love you like nobody loved you, come rain.